Welcome back to another episode of Trap Talk, brought to you by Craig Off. I've shot my Craig Off for a long time, and it smokes targets. I have broke hundreds and hundreds of hundreds with my Craig Off. <laughs> I've been shooting with Craig Off since 2010, and uh, love the quality of the product and also the customer yeah. service. They they make you feel like family for sure. And if Absolutely. you're looking for a new trap gun, then you're going to definitely want to give Craig Off a try. So um, that being said. We have the one and only Mitchell Lovelace from Tennessee. If you guys don't know him, he's a great guy, a great shooter, and been a longtime friend of Ricky's, correct? Oh, yeah. yeah, we used to shoot together quite a bit, travel together. Uh, on this episode, we're going to have a, a lot of good info, some nice stories. We might have to do another episode about other stories, but yeah, it, it, really looking forward to it. He's a wealth of knowledge, and uh, we hope you get a lot out of this episode. Before we get to the show, we do got to thank all of our awesome uh, show sponsors that make this possible every day, uh, starting off with Winnick. Uh, they've supported me and Ricky for a very long time, and they make a fabulous product. Yeah, Winner Shoot Winnick. Uh, I've been with them since about 2005, and I wouldn't be where I'm at without Winnick, so I really appreciate all the support. So get a hold of Bobby, Luke. Or Bill on the phone at the shoot. They'll get you in to get you a custom stock made. Remington, uh, they've sponsored me personally for many years, and now they're sponsoring the show, and uh, they make a great shell, the STS and the Nitro line. I've been smoking targets from coast to coast with these bad boys. Uh, also, we have Game Masters 2, our one and only Richard Marshall Jr. is there to service all of your gun needs. Yeah, I can help you out. Give me an email, call whatever uh see me at the shoots we got vendor buildings in tucson uh ohio and at sparta so get a hold of me or anybody else at, at the store and, and we can help you out yeah i do like seeing you at the shoots rick and the tucson and that kind of brings us to tucson now another yep. sponsor we have on is shot tracker for season two and yep. they are giving away a a shot tracker at the spring grand right rick is that that correct yep. we're going to give one away and uh you got to be present to win, so show up to the Spring Grand. It's like having a coach on the end of your barrel. I can tell you, I've been with them since day one, and it really helps with doubles especially. You see in the graph of your transition from your first target to your second target. So that's exciting, guys. Mark your calendars for the Spring Grand. We're going to do a live episode. We're going to give one of these bad boys away. Make sure you're there. Uh, that brings me to my next show sponsor. Shotguns West is our uh, Pila sponsor they're doing the glasses and uh, they've also agreed to join up and give a pair of Pilas away at the spring grand in addition so not only can you win a shot tracker but you can win a brand new set of Pilas so that much more reason why you're going to want to go to to the spring grand this year um, another new sponsor outlaw engineering uh, good friends with Ricky longtime trap shooting family right right Rick uh, yeah Randy Freston the second the owner of outlaw engineering uh, his dad Randy Freston was past president of the ATA they're from Utah um, so get a hold of him at, at outlawengineering.com for all your engineering survey and development needs we've got a uh, new show sponsor white flyer America's best uh, Rick you know a little something about breaking white oh, flyers yeah. don't you yeah, I've been uh, smoking white flyers for years, and, and I was uh, part of uh, the development of the new Eco Flyer target that will be available here in 24 or 25. Um, they smoke great for a, an Eco Flyer. I mean, it is awesome. Really looking forward to that. Also, we've got SOS Clays. We had Greg on the show. I yep. uh, did an episode. If you missed it, I would definitely listen to that episode. Uh, there's a lot of great valuable information. Rick, what's your experience with SOS? You know, I've used SOS since they've come out, and uh, I really love their app, and it's free also, but you can see scores live. That's what I love about it versus the old way of, you know, wait until the end of the day till score sheet's, you know, printed up on the scoreboard. So it's just awesome. So get a hold of Greg at greg at sosclays.com. It's the best shoot software out there. One last uh, familiar sponsor is uh, Gun and Trophy Insurance. Ricky, you, you know a little bit about them, don't oh, yeah. you? I've been with Gun and Trophy. They've been a personal sponsor of mine for years. And, and uh, get a hold of Cole or Larry Cushman over there. Uh, they can get you the best price for insurance on your firearms or your trophy animals. So we really appreciate them coming on the show. With that being said, Trap Talk listeners, if you love everything about Trap Talk, Please subscribe to our page. Also, throw some likes on the videos that you enjoy. It really means the world to us. Yeah, comment on each episode. We read them. We respond to them. With that, let's get to the show. Hey.
things are clicking they're clicking and you, and that's kind of goes back to the beginning you've got to enjoy those moments celebrate with your friends that's right be thankful that the trap gods shine down on you that day and you know my dad says he goes the trap gods give me it seems like one good day a year just so i'll keep coming back that he he said that at the grand before i mean i've yeah. seen him pop that score at the grand you know once a year he hit and i'm like oh he's in today and he's like oh yeah they smiled on me i got my i'll be back he says i'll be back next year yeah <laughs> welcome to season two of trap talk brought to you by craig off welcome to another episode of trap talk i'm your host zach nanini i'm here with my co-host richard marshall jr and our very good friend mitchell loveless welcome to the show everyone Thank you. Thanks. Richard, would you mind uh, introducing uh, the one and only Mitchell Loveless and letting the, the listeners know about his abilities with a shotgun? His, his abilities? Yeah, I had to write them all down. So uh, Mitchell is the 2011 Grand American Heil Around Champion. That, you know, he gets one of these. He's got one. Zach, we need to get you one. Don't have um, one. <laughs> Mitchell's a 17-time All-American Roughly could be 18, um, 29 Tennessee state teams, 30 plus Tennessee state championships, multiple satellite grand championships. That's the singles, handicap, doubles, all around or overall. Um, he was inducted to the Tennessee Hall of Fame in 2010. That's correct, Mitchell? Yes, sir. Um, he's got 500s from the 27, multiple 200s. We're not sure on hundreds and doubles. We're going to have to check that. Uh, we figure he's around 100 or so, possibly. Zach just is like, I got 200. You know how Zach is. Hey, but. If I got like 35 of them, then he's got like two or three times more than me. I know that. We'll have to, we'll have to fact check yours, Zach. So we're not sure, but. <laughs> we'll have to check it out, but, baby. But, uh, you know, Mitchell's been shooting since 1992, uh, the year I graduated high school. <laughs> Makes me feel kind of old, but. I've shot with Mitchell a long time, so but we'd like to welcome you to the show. Thank you. So, Mitchell, let's get started right off the bat. How'd you get into shooting? You know, tell us why you love the sport. You know, where did it all start for you? Um, so my dad got me into the sport. He shot a little skeet in the, I guess it'd be the late 80s, and then he got into trap shooting, enjoyed it more, and it just timing wise it worked out because looking back I was probably too small to really get started but um I did and and uh didn't shoot a lot in 92 probably 93 94 was about when I your breakout I year I, yeah I didn't do the Zach Nanini where I just <laughs> went all over the country most can't <laughs> but I, I traveled a little bit more. I think that year I got to go down to the Silver Dollar for the first time. Uh, wasn't that, wasn't that the year that the the blizzard came through? Remember that in the early nineties when? Yeah, it, it I don't remember what year it was, but yeah, yeah it was, was there. But um, that's just a memorable time. But um, so I guess it, to answer your question, it was my dad getting started and then wanting to do it and. And enjoyed spending time with him. Yeah. Traveling. You know, your dad, your dad's always been in the photography business. Correct. Right. And you then know. in those early nineties, the late nineties, he actually did, uh, one of the, well, probably not the first, but he would take pictures at the shoots and that was back in the film days. So yep. they would take pictures of the winners and random candid shots at the shoot go somewhere, wherever they were at, get them developed, bring them back, you know, put them in books, label them who, who they knew, and then put them out there and let people buy them right there at the shoot. I mean, sometimes do it the same day, and that was a big hit, and that kind of helped fund his trap shooting. I was saying, he, 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 he was trying to figure out a way how, yeah, can, how can I make some money while I'm shooting? You're right. 
Um, but that's pretty memorable. Um, well, yeah. Yeah, with Allen, I mean, I remember, I mean, I don't know when he stopped doing it at the Grand, but, you know, just recently, I mean, the last five or ten years, he was doing the pitchers at the Grand a ton. And, you know, for the listeners that don't know, I had the the pleasure of shooting Mitchell with Mitchell Loveless at the Grand uh, and Rich Bullard and Alan Loveless and Stephen Rice. And uh, did we have anyone else? Who else? That was it. No. Me, you. Rich, Steven, and your dad. Yeah, yeah, that, was, that was the main group. Uh, we might have had somebody else come and go in there over the years. But, yeah. And but dad, he, he really enjoyed it. So, when the Grand moved to Sparta, he had a chance to do that. And But I think it got to a point where it was so busy, he couldn't really enjoy the Grand. And, you know, he's a social butterfly. So Yes, he is. Yeah, he was go shoot, run back, take pictures, you know, and then run back to, you know, and it was just like, you know, I think I'm going to hand this off. And it's worked out well. Um, uh, I'm losing his name right now. Um, I can see him. The photographer now, what, um, Kelly. Oh, Kelly, Kelly, yeah. Yeah, Kelly. Yeah, Kelly. Know, it's worked out well. People love Kelly. 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 Yeah. And he's done a great job. Hey, your dad oh. handed that off and said, Kelly, and I'm gonna need a little ten percent fee on the backside of it. <laughs> right. no. That's, he was that's it just, the Ricky was Marshall's acting in any way of doing business. Yeah. It just worked out well. Dad was ready to get out of it. Kelly yeah. took it on, and it's worked out perfect. So, so Mitchell, you've been shooting since '92. We've shot a lot together over the years at state shoots, satellite grands, oh, yeah. Ohio a lot. You know, back in the day when when uh, you know, Randy and, and uh, Ross and Josh Taylor and myself and you'd shoot and Nora would shoot with us, yeah. you know, and of course, That's you know, my favorite times for sure. Oh, we, we had a lot of fun, you know, shooting then and, and, you know, you got to shoot with your dad. Now you have a son, Trip. is, I mean, when's, when's Trip starting in the ATA? Well, um, I've always said I'm not going to push him. Uh, yeah. but I think my dad will, uh, yeah. <laughs> he has, he has some interest in it. Um, the school he goes to MTCS here in Murfreesboro, they start the trap team, um, fourth grade. So he's in third grade. So we're about to find out how much interest he really has. And, you know, I guess I was shooting at that age, but looking at it, I'm like, man, he's so young and. Yeah, you know, I feel like he's not—he's strong, but not a hundred rounds. You know, hundred yeah. target strong. Get, get him out there yeah. doing some gun lifts. You know, oh, I, mean, yeah. we, I know. We, and now I'm thinking back when I was doing clinics with uh, the youth shooters and stuff. I'm thinking, yeah. oh my gosh, I'm gonna try to ha- trying to get him to do all this stuff that I was getting to do. You know, getting these youth shooters, to do. but it's so much different trying to yeah. get your own kid to do it versus. Kids just listen to a total stranger better than they do I'm, parents. I'm telling you, with Tyler, he listened for like the first couple, three, four times. Then he'd be like, and I'm like, and then he did. What do you know? You're- yeah, well, he'd go, it's your delivery. And I'm like, my delivery? I just, you, you sat there with the other kids, and I told everybody the same thing, but right. I guess he took it the wrong. So finally, you know, I would tell Jody, like, and she knows how to teach too, you know, but she wouldn't see one thing, and I'd say, hey, and he, She'd walk up, hey, and he'd go, oh, okay. I'm like, <laughs> you're right. Yeah. There's a, there's a, the secret comes out now. All the teaching talent comes from Jody. Right. <laughs> right. Hey, bro. Hey, don't hate. Don't right. hate. They got, they got a whole family of teachers in the Marshall household. They do it big over there. That's right. Yeah. Well, so, that, so now how it is, Trip? He is nine. So I mean, hey, nine. Yeah. Get him. You know, we get him into a nice Katie combo. I mean, <laughs> I think we'll have to go Kohler with that. Oh come oh. on! Come on! That, that hurts my heart. <laughs> well, so so yeah. one thing I want to know, Mitchell. You know, when you started, was it immediate success and growth right off the bat? Were you more of a natural, or were you the guy that had to, you know, scrape in it a long time before you started really shooting good? Oh, you know, you hear that natural talent and stuff. What? But I, I don't think so. I mean, I can remember, I can remember breaking my 
an 88 one day and being and being young, you know, and just elated, like, oh, my gosh. And I remember watching junior shooters like Rick, uh, Eric Wycom, you know, all those guys, and them shooting 99s and 199s and singles. And I'm thinking, how am I ever going to get there and do that? You know, and you – but you don't realize that, you know, they've been doing it for years and how much time yeah. they had put into it. But I remember thinking, you know, shooting in the high 80s, low 90s, and singles and thinking, how is that ever going to be possible to break a 99? And then sometimes, I'll be honest, you lay off for the winter and you come back and you and you start the year out and you're thinking, how am I ever going to break a 99 again? <laughs> you know, because you... But you get in the groove and you knock the rust off. And But, no, it's a – I mean, for some guys, yeah, there might be some natural talent, but it takes work. And, I mean, you have to have the desire and you've got to love it and you've got to sacrifice other things in your life to oh, yeah. really excel at it. You really do. Yeah, and we, we, I don't think – there's a lot of people that get in the sport yep. and they get real fired up about it, but they don't realize – Hey, it's not going to just come in the first year or two. It's going to take time. You know, some people have some success, but most people come back to reality too after they have that initial. Score. Yeah, yeah, great yeah score, the, the initial, and that and that is true. With as you're shooting, you know, starting out. I remember them days. You talk about, you know, like heck, I'm in, I'm in my office. I got trophies all over it on you know shelves and stuff in here, but. You know, there's one in there, it, and I can see it. It's a couple one at the grand for the doubles. I broke a 93 in the doubles, and one as a sub junior, and I was like ecstatic to. Right. You know, and then like the next year, you know, I broke like 99 in the doubles, and I didn't get a sniff. I was like, right. wait a second, just you know, know. So you know, right. this girl, and, yeah. you know, I remember. It's, it's like Foster Barthol said, "You got to shoot better." No, that was <laughs> Matt Barthol. First of all, well, whatever. <laughs> You know, I, I can remember one thing that stands out in my mind, like you're talking about, is at the uh, Four City Gun Club in Savannah. Remember when they had the Dixie Grand there for a few mm-hmm. years? I had my all-time high at the time. As a sub-junior, I had 95 in singles. And we went to dinner at the Elegant Pelican down there. And I, I just felt like I was king of the world. I mean, I had a 95 in singles, you know. I mean, I just... <laughs> That was the coolest yeah. thing. It's funny, those little things that stick out in your mind. And I tell all these young shooters or new shooters, you've got to enjoy it on the way up. Because yeah. if you are just seeking that 99 or 100 straight or whatever, I mean, you're going to miss out on so much fun. And then once you get to that point, as you both know, it's not so fun anymore when you miss one and you're out. You know what I mean? It, it's tough, and it takes a little bit of the fun out of it. Yeah, you know, people say, "Oh, singles are boring." Singles are boring until you get to the last ten, and you're still straight. That's the only exciting yeah, exactly. Thing. Yeah, that's what it's like. I, I always say, you know, roll yeah. along about ninety straight, and you're like, "All right, man, don't don't screw this up now." <laughs> right? Yeah, and I've done it a lot. Oh, <laughs> I've, all all three of us on here have, have, have yeah. missed late, and you're like. <sighs> yeah. yeah, why'd I do that? Right. Well, but, but, but but it happens. But you know, Mitchell, that that perspective, I don't think even in the approximately sixty shows we've done, we've heard much about that perspective of enjoying it on the way up. And I think, you know, it it is something that I haven't thought about until you brought it up. But there was so many times where you you broke that eighty nine, ninety, ninety one, ninety two, and it was your new high score ever, right. and. All everybody at the gun club went out and celebrated yep. it. And it was oh, like, yeah. you know, or even, you know, you, you broke that 96 from the 19 yard line. You got your half yard punch and it was like ready to go to Texas Roadhouse. And right. just that kind of thing, it means so much. And um, oh, yeah. you, you learn yeah. a lot from it. And, you know, Rick, Rick has developed, both of you, a lot of new friendships along the way. And, and I have to admit, I haven't had a ton of, that I've gotten started and, and, you know, shot with, I've seen y'all develop some friendships and yeah. you, know, you run with them for a while and they may create their own or whatever and branch off. But just recently, um, uh, 
friend of mine, William, who y'all might have met at the Grand. He's a we yeah. went to college. We went to college together. He's a dentist, yeah. and, and he just had some time in his life where he got to a point where he could shoot, and and uh, it's kind of neat because I've gotten to watch him, you know, get started, win his uh. first trophy, you know, and it's kind of it's helped rekindle, uh, you know, the fire of competition, you know, where I'm, I said, man, I wish you'd have gotten started sooner because I'm kind of on the down, you know, the downhill side and you're, you're just getting fired up, but it's neat watching a new shooter, just that excitement of going to the, you know, a, a big shoot for the first time or a new place or, you know, Thrilled about a D class trophy, you know. The scores, uh, wanting to win the first, wanting to win the first yeah. buckle. Yeah, you know. that. When I was out west teaching and shooting, and I had a lot of students, and it was really cool to watch a couple of them come up. And one guy broke a hundred one of the days in the wind, and he was like, "Dude, I tied you." Yeah. yeah. And I was like, "Nice job," you know. One yeah. of them broke a, a high score and handicap it at uh, Tucson, you know, and was like, so I, you know, I sent them a text, you know, Hey, not, and they were like, Oh, you saw that? I'm like, Oh yeah. yeah. You know, that's, that's the cool stuff you see. And that's what, you know, you talk about your, your buddy William coming back in. That's what it was for me with, you know, Tyler's been shooting oh, now about man. four or five years when he started kind of wanting, he was like that. I'm going to shoot. Cause the same thing you're doing with trip. I didn't press, put any pressure on Trey. And he didn't want to shoot because he couldn't shoot really well because he's left eye dominant and he would not shoot left handed. Tyler's the same deal. We put the gun in his left hand. He's like, okay, start had some success a little bit, you know. And he goes, yeah, yeah I want to do this. When he started doing the high school, that was cool. And then when he wanted the ATA, you know, I was like, man, this is kind of this is actually making it more fun. For yeah, me, versus and you can Indian. tell it really lit your fire. Yeah, because I mean, now I get to do it with him, and and then in, and you've seen the last few years. So anybody out there that's mad, you can blame everything on Tyler. I just call him. You know, <laughs> right. Him. No, it's but it <laughs> is Zach shaking his head. <laughs> yeah. You know, but I have to is. deal. I have to deal with this almost every day now, Mitchell. So it's just something that I'm getting used to. I mean, Ricky's just a member of the family now, and you you can't hate him for being the best. I mean, hey, it Listen, is what it is. We, we, like we're doing these podcasts, you know, I, I just got back from a, a trip down south and doing lessons and got a lot of people that are listening to these and stuff. So we really appreciate that. And, you know, we're just wanting to, we're wanting to make the sport better. We're trying to do some stuff, you know, you know, just to get more shooters in there, come shoot. It's exciting. It's exciting hearing these stories. I mean, we've gotten 20 minutes and we haven't even talked about anything fundamental yet. And we're just, (laughs) we're just having a good time talking with Mitchell. You got no idea. We could talk for hours with Mitchell about Mitchell and I and Randy and Nora and Joey. Hovering over the edit button. (laughs) No, they're they're gonna love it. So, hello, Trap Talk listeners. Zach and Nini here. And I'd like to thank our show sponsor, Remington. And today, I would like to go into what shells I use when I'm training and when I'm shooting tournaments. First of all, we start with the gun club. This is a great shell. I shoot an 1145 ounce and eighth eight. And this is what I shoot for singles and both shots of doubles. The only reason I don't shoot this in tournaments is because I like a little bit of a harder shot, a little bit of a harder break, but it works great. And it's the same speed as this STS shell. So this STS shell, a little bit harder shot, uh, figure eight wad column, smokes the targets a little bit harder. Also, I shoot for singles and doubles, both shots. And then when I go to the back fence and I want to put the smoke on them, I bring out the Nitro 27, ounce and eight, seven and a half. It's a 1235 shell, blast the targets, works really well. I hope these shells work for you. And I want to thank Remington for supporting Trap Talk. So I know you said right at the beginning, you know, you, you know even that day you had that 95, you're, you're, you're moving up when you were young. When you had struggles, what were the things you were doing back then that push you to the next level. I know you talked about putting that work in, you know, and, and that time and that longevity, but what were the things that you were doing when you were having bad days that made you get to where you are today? Well, I can kind of answer that question, but, but also say, man, new shooters today and young shooters have so much more opportunity with gun fit and yep. I'm going to say that was my number one thing. And, Rick, you remember this back then. I mean, there 
there really wasn't the adjustable comb. Or, no. I mean, so I shot a lot of semi-auto Berettas in my younger days. And, I mean, you didn't – and, you know, my dad was just getting going too, and we were learning, and you didn't realize the gun didn't fit until you had a bruise on your cheek. But yeah. you remember the days when you went to a gun club. Yeah. <laughs> And, and you went to a gun club, and that's just the thing. There was bruised faces and cuts and everywhere, you know. And but nowadays with stock lock and uh, winning and winning and you know all these guys, I mean, th- I think that's why we see so many people excel so much faster these well, days too. Look at the machines too, pat traps, canterbury. Yeah. Oh yeah, we started on hand set and pullers and three hole targets and. You know, things have changed and, and just the the learning curve. I was just talking to a student of mine about it's this. shorter. I just flew home. It, the learning curve when I shot, you know, we got yeah. a patch. Oh, you're struggling on left angle. Go put it on left angle. You can shoot a hundred right. of them. You know, right. so that's, you know, and you see that. And that's the, you know, that's the one, one thing that really I see is, you know, the learning but, curve. Sure. But, yeah, but Zach, to answer your question, when, when things early on when I was younger, we would check gun fit, and that was usually what was going wrong because I was growing, things were changing, and then when you hit a little slump, you know, it's like, oh gosh, you know, we need to lengthen the gun, you know, or change the comb or whatever. And I went through a slew of semi autos back then, and I tell a lot of young shooters and their parents, you know, things get a lot better when the kid quits growing and things stabilize and you can yep. build off of that. And, you know, I mean, I know there's people that buy nicer guns when the kid's young, but it's kind of like, let them hit that growth spurt and then go out and get the nice stop and yeah. that nice gun. And then you're good for a while now. Several years now. Yeah. You, uh, when you first started Mitchell, were you just getting help from your dad? So Basically. my dad, but, uh, you know, we started for some reason, Pete McCall and Dean DeBow from Kentucky, um, kind of saw that we needed help and took us under their wing and kind of sh- showed us the ropes. We, we ran into them at a lot of shoots and stuff. And whenever we needed something or a gun broke or, or whatever, they really helped us out and gave us a lot of pointers. And then, What's kind of weird is, you know, that's when I, you know, Nora was running in that circle at the time and yep. with all those shooters and I got to know her and then not to get off subject, but then time goes by and, you know, and then all of a sudden developed a really good re- relationship with Nora and her current husband, Randy, which I hope yep. they do one of these one day. I hope you can talk. I'm about trying it. to get, I'm trying to get Nora on there, you know, with technology, I you know, know, she's. She's not very technically sound, but no. Hey, Mitchell, Mitchell, I'm going to call a hit, and it's an Italian hit. you got to make that happen. Give her a call. Or tell her if Mitchell Loveless from Tennessee can do it, then anybody can do it. Right. We'll, we'll do it probably live down it at the right. dollar. During yeah, the we'll summer. get it. We don't even have paved roads in Tennessee, and look at us. We've got computer. And- <laughs> hey, listen, I've been, in that. I've been by your place. you got paved roads. Not very many. But- <laughs> right. Now, did you ever take lessons from from Frank Hoppy? I did. Frank came you, to yeah. Big Springs in, yep. uh, I want to say the early 2000s, you know, and I was in, yeah, I want to say I was still in college, and, you know, and I was shooting decent at the time, and I'm like, Dad, I don't need to take that lesson. You know, you're young, and you're, co- you're a little cocky. and yeah. But I think it was one of the best things I ever did. You know, it, it – um, one, it's Frank, you know, and um, yep. it, but anybody that doesn't know, y'all probably already discussed it already, but Hall, Hall of Famer, man's man, John Wayne of trap shooting. I yep. mean, you couldn't. One of the best guys best out guys there. Ever. You're one of your mentors for sure. Oh, my, my mentor. I mean, really my mentor. I mean, I traveled with him from the time I was 13, 14. So, but yeah. Just, yeah, just one of the neatest guys you could ever oh. meet. And, uh, I can't remember in particular at the moment what I was struggling with at the time, but I know he helped me. And there's things I learned in doubles just from that clinic that I still use today. That absolutely. I mean, but one of the coolest things that was not shooting related was he had that uh, at the time that red 
Chevy pickup truck with the top. Yeah. That said that. MR Ducks or what did it yeah. say? Yeah, something. And he drove that down there, and we were we had shot a lot, and uh, he uh, opened up the back of that topper. He's like, "Let me show y'all something." And out he pulled that red tail hawk bronze that he's just carrying around in the back of his truck, and it's like, "Oh my gosh!" You know, and yeah. at that moment, I realized how talented he is. Oh. And, uh, I was fortunate to watch him do the burning on making like little feathers. And I got them, you know where they're at? They're in the safe. Right. Because, you know, I mean, you're not going to get another like, one. Yeah. He's passed away. You know, you know, uh, he, uh, yeah, the art, his artistic ability. And you wouldn't really think that, you know, talking to him. Right. And then he'd be like, Oh, you want a feather? Pull it out, you know, 20 bucks. And, and I was, what you made that. And then when I lived with him, I sat there and watched him carve on a duck, and I'm like, "What the heck?" And then when he got all done, it looked like a live duck that someone had oh, yeah. done taxidermy on. It flew oh. in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm so, getting off track. But anyway, I I heard a little bit of gold right there, and I want to spend some time on it. You said. You know, you got some tips from Frank that immediately helped your doubles and that you use today. I want to go there right now. What did you mean? What do you do? What's helpful to the listeners? Well, uh, I have to say, I, I give Frank credit for this, but I, I took his charge and control. So, um, and that's what I remember. He he just, so back then, it's coming back to me now. I tried to just pop pop, you know. No. No, surely not. <laughs> not Mitchell Loveless. No, no. Not pop, pop. <laughs> I tried to shoot them a little quick, but when things are really going well, I, you get the first one quick, and then you yep. make a, con- a more controlled move to the second one, like Rick does and is really good at it. But occasionally we get going too fast, and it's just pop, 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 pop. You know, and that's what he really helped me with. He's like, hey, you don't have to shoot them both that quick. <laughs> If you'll just get the first one quick, yep. it allows you more time on the second one. It's still up in the air, and take a look at it. Don't just sling over there and shoot at it. You yeah. know, so so charge and control. Attack yeah. the first target with a lot of a lot of a, you know speed and ability, and then look at the second target and make a cleaner shot into it, which is easier said than done based on me and you's shooting abilities and doubles. I mean, me and Mitchell on the grand squad sometimes like, bah, 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 and then, oh, we'd miss. And we were like, Ricky, just look at us. And watch you guys shoot, and I'm like, Jesus, would you slow down a little bit? Right, right. And that's what Frank, Frank would always say, and he was weird. He'd go, you want to shoot it reckless but in control. I know that right. sounds stupid, but, and it's true. That's how I teach. I'm like, you just got, you can't watch it break. You just shoot right. it and go, and then you're nice and smooth through the second one. Right. Yeah, yeah. that's I, I miss him dearly. I mean, I could call him. I'd have a bad day or something, and and I was in BFE wherever shooting, and I'd you know I'd call him up, and he said, "Oh, you're probably doing this," and it was so funny that the next day I'd go out, and it was like, "Man, yep. I was doing that. that's what he I'm doing." Is a neat guy. I mean, oh yeah. Guy. Yep. So Mitchell, uh, you know, I've watched you shoot a lot of doubles and you do shoot them pretty fast, probably as fast as anybody in the country. Um, are you holding above the house, waiting for the target to your barrel? Are you on the house like me and Rick? Like what's your style and technique that you're physically using in doubles? So I'm a two odd shooter and, and which I think y'all both are too, but my style is to come up off the house. Yeah. If for, for me, and everybody's different, and I tell yeah. people, you know, there's lots of ways to skin a cat, and there's, there's, a, lot of out, there, yeah, there's a lot of shooters out there that have success that do it different. But, but my style is to come up off the house, probably, depending on the height of the target, but almost parallel. Yeah, you're trapping the first target. Well, I, yeah, a little I, bit. You, you yeah. at times. I mean, we've shot. I've stood right there. With, you're standing right next to me to the right, and that gun will be like, yeah. It up. depends on the moment. You do make a little move. Yeah, I try. I try to make the goal is. Yeah. I'll say the goal is to try to make a little move, <laughs> and then probably as things go on, it gets less and less if, if things are yeah. clicking. But yeah, my style is definitely different I, because if I come off the house i want to just snap at that first one and i'm sure every time so 
to yeah. keep me from short stroking the first one, I bring it up so I'll get to it and and then I go over. But so are you looking are you looking above that gun, below the gun? Exactly the question. Yeah, Ricky was on it. He already had it. I, I try to look over the gun, but being but being too odd, I can still see, see the movement of the bird coming. Yeah. But if I you see it in your peripherals, right. what you're seeing, and yeah, which is normal. I mean, that's right. yeah. And so once you lay hate on that first target, then what happens? Like, like you, you, you know, and it's pretty impressive people to see him hit this oh, thing. Yeah. I mean, it looks like uh, it's running back uh, into the house most days. So, like Rick said, I'm you're trying to not watch the first one break, and nothing. Well, we can edit this out, but pisses me off more than than missing the first one. But a lot of times, if if a lot of times if that happens and you're swinging over the second one, you'll have broke the second one and then go, did I did I miss that first one? And you look, it, it really oh, does. It's funny how if you're shooting really good doubles and you miss a first target, you don't know that you missed the first target until after they yeah. call, you know, lost dead, and you're like, oh crap, I did miss that thing. Because right. you, if you're doing good. it right, you're pulling the trigger and moving the eyes. Exactly, but that is a good thing in a way because you're getting out of there quick enough. There's too many yeah. people that shoot the first one, they hang around, they want to watch the smoke ball, and you are ruining your percentage on the second one by doing that. Yeah. So you're Like Pete McCall said, you're at least going to break 50 if you do that because you're going to get the first one every time. <laughs> Rick, Rick remembers. Yeah, but you're at least going to get 50, but, you know, you need to shoot the first one, get out of there, and go get the second one. Hello, Trap Talk listeners. Today's episode is brought to you by Winnie Custom Gunstocks. That being said, a custom gunstock is going to elevate your game to get the same fit every single time. And I can attest to that. I broke hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hundreds with my Winnie Custom Gunstock. I haven't broke hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, Rick, <laughs> but I had, did break a, a hundred from the 27 within seven days of getting my stock and broke two more that year and loved it. Here, this is okay. Did okay. you take it or me? We'd like to thank Winning Custom Gun Stocks for supporting Trap Talk. That being said, everyone knows. Oh. Winners shoot winning. Are we doing the end work? Getting into that, I want to go right into your gear. Um, as quick as you shoot that first target, I've heard that you say you open up the choke a little because your target's not as far as mine and Rick's most days. Is that Mitchell, Mitchell, Mitchell's just slinging shot out there. I see the spreader with nines. No, no, you don't. No, you don't. What, what, what do you run for that? No, I, I went through a slew of chokes, but um, I couldn't tell you exactly what the constriction, the thousands are, but it's an IC. It's a it's a Kohler IC, that's, and that's and uh, but wait, hold on, yeah. Mitchell, your your IC, you ain't cleaned that choke in thirty years, so it's probably, it's probably an improved mod. Probably it might be improved mod. mod, yeah. I mean, yeah. So 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 you you're open choke, and you're hammering that first one because you're shooting it so quick. And then are you improved mod mod on the second shot or full improved or what do you improve mod on the second improved mod? mod. Same yeah. what we're shooting second shot, Zach. And yeah. then in, in your singles and handicap, are you using the same choke singles and handicap or are you changing chokes? No, he's and, a, that, and that drives he's a, a lot better of guys. again for singles. <laughs> and that drives a lot of guys crazy, but um you know, I, I understand and can respect the theory of just putting in a full choke and, and running with it, but at the same time I know my faults in my shooting ability, and that is to touch one off a little too quick. A little early. Yeah, and so when I do that, yeah, when I do that, and I'm shooting a light, you know, thirty thousandths or thirty-five, I'm shooting a, I'm shooting a baseball out there at it, six feet out of the house, which I'd rather go with a modified, and I can still hang some smoke, but I'm also going to get some. Not so good. Okay. Well, and, and, and I think that that statement, know yourself, because like I, you know, when I'm shooting singles, I'm trying to see that target come out, look at it really good, make a nice clean move to it. If it's bouncing and hopping around, I get there when I get there, and I break it. Ideally, I'm not trying to break anything close to the house. But with Mitchell, if that thing comes to his barrel. Wait, time out. Zach. I just shot with you at the autumn grand, not trying to break anything close to the house. A couple of you, bang, and I'm like, "Hey, hey, that that, that hey. stock that I got on there was moving a little quick. I need to back it off a little because that thing was like, ooh, lighten it off. I felt like Mitchell Loveless, but I was shoot with not so slow Joe Charnigo. Yeah, <laughs> so, right. 
with but, with, uh, but you're I shooting mean, quick. You're talking about shooters shooting different speeds. Randy, this was years ago, but he said he had a group. Um, they were talking about how quick shooters shoot targets and how far out. And he had the whole class. He was working with Norton. He had the whole class come around to the side and watch another squad that was shooting, you know, Pay it from the side now, looking at the trap house. Look how far out some are breaking them, and look how close. And I didn't really think about it till he brought it up. But and you can do that at any club. But if you you know if you watch that, you know guys will say, "Well, I'm shooting a full." Well, you know, Joe Charnago shooting a full compared to who's a good. Well, I don't mean this in a bad way. Bob Munson shooting a full. You know, there's a lot of diffs. Yeah, Bob. Bob different. used to ride the targets out right. there. Pat you know, Stacy. Pat Stacy rides right. the targets out there. You know, and you look at uh, Rick's kind of the one of the exceptions, but a lot of your great single shooters are more methodical. Yeah, single. You know, uh, gotta be deliberate. Like, gotta be deliberate. Gotta be deliberate. And sometimes Zach knows this. I mean, you get on a run, but it's hard to change gears. Sometimes you've got to. Change gears from singles to handicap, and then. Well, look at Zach at the Grand this year. He broke, you know, four hundred ninety-five, and out of, you know, four hundred ninety-five, and then missed on the last post or something. It was the it was four seventy-five, and then I missed on the first four, four, and then the first post of the last trap because I was like, "Damn, he!" I mean, he and he was every. I'm not kidding you, you know, Mitchell. And we shot the whole prelims together, and every singles. He was shooting him the same, and he got to that quick trap, and he started getting quick. And I was like, "Yeah." And I was just getting ready to say something like, "Like if he'd look over, and he didn't, and then a couple shots later, whip, he whiffs one." And I was like, "I know he would have been labeled the single specialist." If exactly. I still called him a single specialist. I'm like, glad I didn't run him because I don't <laughs> want that title. Oh, whatever. Oh, I'd take it if it happened, but you know, sometimes. Uh, you just get in that zone, but yeah, speed kills. When you uh, when things are clicking, we all have a tendency to get a little quicker, a little quicker. Yeah. And it, I think all it is is your confidence. Everyone, yes. your confidence is getting up, and you're just like, I got this, I got this, and then you stub your toe. It, it is, it is, and that can kill you because you change your tempo. And I think at the end of the day, you know, you got to shoot when you're there. But right. if you're like breaking them when you're there and it's at apex or before apex. And then you start getting, you know, cocky and you're blowing them up out of the house. Like Mitchell Loveless. I mean, sometimes Mitchell, you literally, you and Joe Charnigo are the only two people that I've shot with that scare me sometimes because like a target comes out and it goes whoosh and it goes flying back into the house. And I'm like, Holy shit. Did he just like misfire and hit that thing? Or, and then you just, it's not a good thing. You know, and my dad, when I was younger, he's like, look, you don't get bonus points for how quick you, you know, and you you don't, my my singles are still up and down at times. You know, they've never been just stellar, (laughs) but I have flashes of brilliance occasionally. (laughs) It's I'm shot with you. Hey, I'm shot with you when you broke 200 and then 195. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, and it's either clicking or it's not, but with, with, you know, I know my style and I'm never going to be that guy that consistently slow down. And, you know, I just can't, when I see it and I'm there, I've got to pull the trigger. So, so carry that to handicap because I mean, you have been known and I will agree with you. You've shot some great singles, but like, I never thought to myself, wow, the all time greatest single shooter, Mitchell Loveless. But what I have thought is handicap and doubles. That's a bad man. So, so when you get in the handicap, I mean, it's almost even a more aggressive move than singles. Would you agree? Yes. And that's, um, but I think not everybody, but I think if you look at the, um, as a whole, the better handicap shooters, they can either flip the switch and be more aggressive and shoot it in a quicker window or that's their natural style. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, you take like a Rick or Sean Hawley or, or who, you know, all the top shooters that can do all three well, they can slow it down for singles and then they can turn it up for handicap when they need to. Or if they're out west and the target's floating and they've got all day, they can slow it down and make it smooth. Yeah. But, you know, you're not going to see too many just stellar single shooters where that's their game 
really excel at handicap. And vice versa, because, you know, what you just touched on, like you said, turning it off and turning it on, being smoother at the 16, being more aggressive at the 27, I think most people fall in one of two categories. They've either got an aggressive gun move or they've got a smooth gun move. So, like, I've seen people that got a smooth gun move and that's their natural move and they don't change their move and they blow singles up and they never make the 27-yard line. And then I've seen people that have that, you know, that kind of reckless endangerment move from the 27 and they're blowing them up shooting 96s 97s 98s and singles or in handicap and then they'll shoot 88 in singles and i'm like what the hell happened and they're like oh, i don't know i just didn't didn't hit the thing yeah and that's why and i think y'all i think y'all agree that like when you get it all together and you win an all around or overall yep. at any shoot that is like the most rewarding because you felt like okay i kept it all together you know the whole, the whole all around or the overall you know, and maybe Most you have a trophy in one of the disciplines all week but you kept it together enough to to you know yeah well look at what you just you just said zach about you know maybe good here good there bob munson we just talked about him you know bob one of the greatest singles double shooters of all times you can't he take that away from him and he broke 100 in the grand american right. handicap and won it the one year exactly so and you know. yeah, you're right. And and when it's your time, it's your yeah. time. You That's know, right. I mean, yep. uh, Devin Harris winning the hundred thousand. Hundred thousand. Yeah. I mean, with light, light seven and a <laughs> Yeah. When things are clicking, they're clicking, and you, and that's kind of goes back to the beginning. You got to enjoy those moments, celebrate with your friends. That's right. Be thankful that the trap gods shine down on you that day, and you know, my dad says he goes. The trap gods give me, it seems like, one good day a year just so I'll keep coming back. That He, he said that at the Grand before. I mean, I've yeah. seen him pop that score at the Grand, you know, once a year. He hit, and I'm like, oh, he's in today. And he's like, oh, yeah, they smiled on me. I got my, I'll be back. He says, I'll be back next year. Yeah. <laughs> well, you that stuff, Mitchell. And, and, and you know, we, we shot, like I said earlier, a lot of shoots together. Um, you know, look back at uh, – the Wisconsin State shoot in a Waukesha. Oh, and, wow. you know, we, we bought Mitchell in the Calcutta, me and Jody and Randy and Nora and Mitchell. And uh, we split him up. We shoot. We were shooting with Jerry Mitchell. Remember Jerry yeah, we from Indiana? Yeah. And we were shooting, and, and Mitchell won the handicap. Zach, in the, the Calcutta. He threw his gun on the ground, did the sprinkler out there. Everybody's like, what the hell's going on? Hey, I know what it's like to need a little bit of money in a trap shoot every once in a while. When you hit those and you're coming up, it's a big deal. I don't remember how much we won, but it was a lot. We split it all up. We had the funnest trip driving, carpooling down. There was three, you know, Randy was in his and and Nora and me and Jody and you. And that's when Mitchell grabbed a damn dead raccoon and threw it in the bed of his truck. Remember that? Right, yeah. And that's the old, and that's fun. And you know, the old days. Probably, if that wouldn't have happened, I probably would have gone home and worked yeah. a little bit before the grand. And then yeah. it's fun. You call your dad up, and you're like, "Hey, this happened. I'm gonna go to I'm Iowa. Going to Iowa. I'm going to Iowa with these guys. That's I got some shooting great. money. Right. That's right. I remember them days being in. You talked about Savannah. I remember being in Florida one year, and I did well. And I called dad. I said, "Hey, dad, I'm uh, I'm going up to Savannah." He goes, "Savannah." I go, yeah, the Dixie Grand. He goes, did you do well? And I said, yeah, I made about nine grand. And I'm, like, I'm going there to shoot. Okay, <laughs> have fun. You're good you to know. go. That's so, the good thing about this sport, though. It's just the, the friendships, the camaraderie, the whole, I mean, really, that's what keeps you going back, you know, time friends, in and time out. Friends from all over the country. You know, I mean, you got a California guy that's imported into – Missouri, Missouri. <laughs> Nebraska guy, you know, and I mean, I got lifelong friends that are in all different states, you know, and, and the other coolest thing is you, uh, a young guy, a sub junior can get in a shoot off with the Michael Jordan of the sport tomorrow. You know what I oh, mean? Yeah. It, it can happen. And you Absolutely. and you can even squad side by side purposely yeah. or accidentally. Yeah. And it's just one of the, coolest things that you can just and, sit right next you know, to I, I've shot we've like I said shot I've jumped on squads before where the guy's like oh are you on this squad they're like oh I must be on the wrong squad right, right. no I just jumped on they're like <laughs> you know and it's right. cool though, 
to yeah. do that and shoot with different people, you know? Sure. I mean, I, I was thinking about doing that for the grand next year in the prelims. Hey, I'll tell you what, that face that you just made, the face you made, Ricky, that, that people make, I still make that face when you're walking out of the squad and I know you're coming. I'm like, oh, there's Ricky. I mean, it just, it just hits every damn thing. You can't, you can't help it. But In 2023 here, we have done 37 state shoots, seven of the 11 uh, satellite grants. We're almost there. So, so most of them. We now have, uh, I think it's 241, 242 clubs across the country using our system. If a club was wanting to use you, do you have like a base entry level pricing or packages that you advertise or is it based on the size of the shoots, Greg? Our base level price is zero. Our complete package system, you know, the whole enchilada is zero. Zero is a good it's price. A good price. <laughs> it's good, yeah, it's a good price. Well, the premium members do not pay a pre-squad fee ever. Yeah. For all year. All year. Can yeah. I buy a lifetime membership? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was just gonna say, Give me your uh, first yeah, lifetime there, is there a five I year? wanna be number one. Zach, we, we, want, want, we want lifetime <laughs> memberships for me. <laughs> so, so Mitchell, you know, we talked a little bit about your gear. You're running different chokes at different yardages. Um, you know, you're not really changing the attack of your stroke from singles to doubles. You're staying consistent on the press. You're above the house pretty much in all the games, but you're very, you're varying the height uh, based on you know the conditions at hand. Um, as far as point of impact glasses, uh, shotguns, what are you using equipment wise? And 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 are there any specific things that you do differently in your hold points as far as left to right than like standard are you are you on the oh, corners on there. on one of four are you holding to the center like what's that stuff look like oh we're going there um i know so, uh well so equipment um glasses i've used l m lenses for years randolph rangers that sort of thing you know I know the fad is the Pila's and that's, I think they're a great product, but I just, I just can't get used to that. I, I just, I think I'm old school. I like the blinders. I like the regular yep. frames. I mean, I think there's okay. something to the blinders. I feel naked when I don't have them on, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to see naked. the movement. I don't want any, anything distracting me when I've got the gun mounted. So, I mean, but, uh, what was the other thing? Hold points. You got uh, equipment. So you said glasses. I've shot the same Kohler since 1997. I was 15, I think. Um, and I would say next to um, Charlie Long, it's a pretty good advertisement for Kohler's durability. I I know I've got 300,000 through it. I, I know I do. And I wish I could. I would have documented all of them, but um, it's been good to me, and I have no complaints. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna just, you know, there's been a few shooters along the way. We've all seen them. They they shot a gun really well, and then some company came along and said, "Hey, we're gonna give twenty people a gun," you know, and try to get them on the team, and that's good, you know. But there's guys that just immediately go back to their yeah. their old faithful and i just yeah I betsy that and i'm like you got, you got old faithful everybody's yeah, I, got I everybody's got betsy the the one yeah, that you man, know just, that if you bring it out it's on you know you just you you rub the stock you, you you squirt some rem oil on her before yeah. you put her away you know i i, I get you're it you're shooting the old tc model right i'm shooting the original it's one of the first 200 that they made yep. yeah you're yeah. you're an OG. So so now the question that you were trying to avoid, hold left point. to right hold points. What what are you doing? What's that look like? <laughs> so my theory on that is a little different, and I really on the right side of the trap field. I like to shift my hold point a little bit to the right to help me <laughs> feel like. That's one way to look at it. But, hey. Cheat, hey, cheat. I cheat. like how he's said cheat. I cheat, to the right. I cheat to the right side of the field so that I don't – you hear so many people, oh, I'm struggling with the hard right, hard right, whatever. And I say, really? hey, yeah, if you were going to shoot sporting clays, would you be worried about where the target's really the, – the trap is? You'd be worried about how fast it's going, what the angle is. But everybody gets so hung up on the trap house. Yep. And, I, and I say that uh, – in clinics and in the past is like 
look at the target and what it's doing and how far it's going, how fast it's going, what the angles are like. Because you go to so many clubs and this field's off to the left and this one's off to the right. Or you go to the Grand and the Trap House is one and a half times bigger than what you're used to at your own club. Correct. You're like, And even they're like, well, I hold on the corner at, at my club. You know, and at the grand, I'm holding at the corner, and everything doesn't feel right. The trap's huge; it can hold two pallets of targets side by yeah. side. Yep. And that angle bird's coming within the window inside the house. inside the house. Right. So there's all those things to look at, and and so my whole points vary depending on the club. You go to Kentucky, Rick shot there. You know, the trap yeah. houses are real short because sure. they were built for handsets. You know, old Western machines, and you won the handicap that year. <laughs> yeah, and and um, I'll pay you later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know the trap houses are short, and if you hold down on the house, it's probably going to feel a lot different than if you've shot most of your targets at a club that's only had pat traps. You know, so 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 that's that's huge right there, right? So identifying club to club the size of the trap house, the location of the machine inside the trap house, the way the angle's looking, is it high or low? Is it sliding out the corner? Is it sliding out the inside? And then making adjustments based on that, which, you know, myself and Rick both are down shooters, but even a little bit on that left and right and a little bit on that up and down, depending on how you see that edge, uh, it, it, it is something that could potentially be changed. But Mitchell's really dialing it in. And he, when we talk about it and, and dials per the deal where me, I'm always on the house. Right. So I just use that as my mindset is if it's a lower house, higher house, I'm just going to stay in that spot. That right. way I'm not changing anything. But one of the most, right. But one of the most important things I think for a new shooter, and I know y'all realize this without even thinking about it, but where am I going to pick up the target in the background and where yeah. am I going to break it? Because y'all have been out there at the shoot offs more lately than I have, but you know, as at the grand, as the sun's going down, there's times where, Hey, I'm not going to be able to pick that bird up until this point. So I either Correct. need to slow my roll a little bit mm. or, and there's some clubs you go to, Hey, I need to try to break it a little quicker. Cause I can see it better in this. Yeah you know, in this zone versus, but that's the most, you know, Leo Harrison, we can say he's absolutely one of the best, if not the, the best, best, right? The, the, what, the would he always, what would he always say? Or it seemed like he would always say when he had a good day, it was, I was seeing him well that day. I was yeah. seeing him well, you seeing know, and I think that was so important was it was all, and you would think, how did he see him? Well, his glasses were this thick, but, <laughs> but, you know, he was seeing them really well that day, and that equated to a great score. Which was that, that equated to about every day at the shoot. Right. Yeah, yeah, he was seeing them well every damn day. That well, big, right. big. I remember breaking ninety nines and handicap and Big L rolling in with the old hundo, and I'd be like, "Really?" And he'd be like, "Yeah, I saw him pretty good today." <laughs> right. That was his go-to. <laughs> we, yeah. We'd laugh, play cards, and you know, hey, and that's that's going back. That's what it is. Having fun and enjoying it and that, you know otherwise we wouldn't be doing it yeah. so with, with with that being said on the left are you cheating to the left too or are you still inside on on on, on, on the, one on the left i don't and this would be kind of hard to uh may maybe hard to visualize because we're not out on a trap field but i'm right-handed i'm a two-eyed shooter if i if i started cheating to the left and i see this so much with you can do it a little bit, but if you get too out of control going to the left, which young shooters do this, you're going to get the gun, especially if you get it up. You're going to get it in the way of your vision, seeing that bird come out. Now, if you keep the gun down, like y'all do, you can go out and you're not really hindering anything. It's but, over the gun no matter but, what. Right, it's over the gun no matter what. But I see people that try to do it on both sides. And, you know, if I'm getting the gun up and I'm going out this way, well, I can't look back through the gun. It blocks it off. And you, you almost have to lift your head and kind of flinch out of that if you got that gun parked in that area. Yeah. Yep. And sometimes I catch myself, I'm getting too far out to the right and I'm not, um, I'm not seeing the straightaway good enough or, 
you know, I've, you got to keep that in check. You can overdo it, and you never want to, as Rick said, cheat one way to a bird more to more one bird than another. And now you've made this one super easy, and now you've made what's the easy one hard. Yeah. And, you know, you haven't really so, accomplished anything. So. Let's just go to post five. You're hanging off the right hand side. That target's coming to your barrel. Are you letting it break the barrel and then you're attacking it, or are you cutting it off kind of like a, a doubles target where it's coming to the barrel on three and you're lighting it up? When I do cut it off, it scares myself, and it does happen. But he, he, he cold rolls it. Yeah, and that can happen more on post four, but I'm trying to let it get past the barrel and then I, and then I go get it. But occasionally, it's just a uh, – Reflex. Yeah, but yeah. it depends on the background in the club, but I'm trying to not trap it because it just takes too much perfect timing to do that. And really, uh, not the best idea. But I tell you what, though, Mitchell, it sure does look impressive when you do it. I say, oh, that boy knows how to shoot. It's <laughs> impressive when it happens, but as my dad would say, it doesn't get you any bonus points. That's right. A line's better. Shoot the first one and then loop to the second one and drive through it. Oh. Just like that. Great shot. Shot two. Great shot. We're just trying to help every shooter out there, no matter if you're an expert or a beginner, and this product will take your game to the next level. Works for any of the discipline. As long as it can find a clay in the image, it will figure out how it's moving and how that shot pattern is going to be. Yeah. Now in that shot, I intentionally shot high, which is most person, people do. That's what you did. Yep. So outside the pattern. Yep. Now what's it say for the correction of that? One foot. Yep, that'd be correct. Now in this one, I will smoke the target. If people want to purchase this unit, what's the best way to do it? I mean, is it is it through your guys' website? Is there a phone number to call? Or what's what's that situation? Yeah, go to our website and uh, takeintech.com and an online store. We have inventory. We'll ship usually within 24 hours. Huge thank you to Jim and Bob at Take Aim Tech for supporting Trap Talk. Somewhere that we haven't gone, and I want to uh, spend a second on it, is for the people that don't know, you've done an instructional video. Is that correct, Mitchell? Yep. I did. So, yeah, and that was a so, neat experience. So, so, I mean, that was how many years ago when you did that? Uh, well, I can only remember that because my son was one at the time and he's nine. So eight years, eight years. Yeah, it's hard to believe it's been that long. And unfortunately the guy that, um, that produced those videos has passed Sunday. away since he just passed of, away yeah, uh, from cancer, but it, it was a neat experience. And I think one thing that helped me, uh, more than anything was my ties to Kohler and he could get some advertising dollars out of it. <laughs> but now do you do you catch yeah. yourself, Mitchell? Be yes, honest here. Do you catch your do you catch yourself watching that video? Oh, every night. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if I if I had a video as Rich Bowler, hey, Mama, we'd be watching we on loop. A video tonight. Right. No. You know, what it took it took so much time editing that thing and them asking me questions because even though they had done a couple others before they still weren't trap guys so yeah. they still had questions they were sporting guys and i i don't think i have sat down and watched the whole and nobody really likes to listen to themselves you know i mean the sound of your own voice just listen Fact. it's just <laughs> yeah it's weird but I don't think I've sat down and watched the whole thing straight. And I was just so tired of doing all the editing and back and forth. It was like, we're done. However it turned out, <laughs> fine, whatever. You know, you just, it, it's a lot. It's, there's a lot to it. Well, you know? I have watched it front to back. And what I can yeah. say is it is a very good video. So if any of the listeners are listening, I mean, do you still sell them, Mitchell? Or where do they get them? Or do you even know where they go? Or um, I, I'm, pretty sure sunrise Productions still has them for sale and a few other places you know um you can get them at the grand or but i full disclosure i had a five i think it was a five-year deal you got a royalty for five years and then they cut you out but it's one of those things 
you you see yeah so so you're telling me it's not like the seinfeld reruns where you're getting checks i mean we're not we're not we're not helping you out here by getting these these videos right mitchell no and you're not going to retire on or anything but you see the shooters like uh what bender and you know they do um a bunch of them you know it's like anything else that's why you see actors make multiple movies they you need to put something new out there because after a few years it dies off and then you come out with something else and yeah you know but i i was glad well, I, I think i think the reason i brought it up is because your style's a little different you're not oh, right. you're not as traditional as like a ricky for say or you know you, you kind of got this different way of looking at the game you know letting that target you know you're out on the sides the corners you're attacking things you know it's not like the you know the traditional hold on the corner and on the house and look i mean you you really move with the day i mean and i've seen you change based on what's happening out there and and just go right into it pretty pretty uh successfully right. well i appreciate that yeah i mean and working with shooters and i think rick's this way too i try to take what they've got and work with that and i'm i've never been a hey you've got to shoot this way this this way or the highway type deal. because there's a lot of people that just they just can't conform to a certain way there's some that can yeah but a lot of but people the majority can't the majority can't they've got a if they're a slower moving more methodical person that's that's how they are that's how yeah. they are you know yeah. and so yeah i but I appreciate that. I'm glad you watched it front to back. I, yeah. I did. I, I've watched it several times, and they've got it on. If you want to know, they've got it on loop in that little shop at the Grand in Sparta. Yeah. Oh, so you go in there, and oh, they got yeah. that thing running. And I go in there, and I'm like, "Hey, I shoot with that guy." Mickey, I mean, I, once I, I've been, I've been in there and had a couple drinks watching it. <laughs> oh, so, so, so Mitchell, you know, we've talked a lot about your whole point. We've talked a lot about you know stories. Is there anything else, advice, tips, goal, yeah. other stuff that, that we're missing here today that would be relevant to shooters? Because you have so much knowledge. You've taught so many people. I mean, what are kind of your, your tidbits of gold that you want to give people? You know, the one thing that comes to mind immediately is, and I hate seeing young shooters, and I say young shooters, high school age, yeah. maybe 14, 15 high school. This is a life long sport don't burn yourself out in two years time we the three of us have seen how many shooters have you oh, seen? Just they come and go and hundreds. I understand. hundreds yeah and it's it's the greatest thing and it's awesome and it's a, but don't try to fit it all in into two or four years or whatever just go see some new places don't don't just blow it all out in two years because <clears throat> excuse me it's it's hard on your parents they yeah. figure, it's kind of like they wake up after two years and go, oh, my God, I can't believe we spent this much. This is a fun <laughs> sport, but we got to slow down. But just – and I know that's easy to say and hard to do, but just remember it's a lifelong sport. You can and, do this forever. Yeah, and ease well, into it. Ease into yeah, it. It, it, and I've seen so many people, they have some early on success – and then they jump in full force and they go and they run and they, you know, hit all these accolades. You know, like you said, it right. takes the fun out of it when you're running hundreds and then you don't. And then one and a half, two years in, they hit their first major slump and they don't know how to recover from that because, you know, now, now they develop something and they're like, man, and then they just want to quit because they're not winning, you know, champion every single time. And right. I mean, or they think that their singles or their handicap average should equal their singles average, and that's just not the way. It yeah, it's not gonna happen. But how many times have you heard? You know, oh, I'm breaking 93. I've got 93, 94 handicap average, and I really want to get it up to my singles. And I'm like, that just doesn't happen. You don't have match. Yeah, your 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 name's not Leo Harrison. It's not gonna right, happen. That's why like it's handicap. You're gonna have ups and downs. But you're right. People hit that slump, and they're like, eh, I'm on to the next. Best thing. Yeah, they, they they quit right, and and I think the the, the one thing I can say, and I, the one thing I've noticed, I look at Ricky, I look at you, I look at Sean Hawley, I look at any of the greatest trap shooters of all time. Every single one of them, I've seen them struggle, but every single one of them never gave up and figured it out. They just they continued to say, you know what? I might be going through something right now, but they didn't just say, well, that's it. I'm done trap shooting, right? They they you know, they go through that 
you know, that mile of bad road and they bloody up their feet. And then on the other end of it, they're a champion. You know, they're still a champion. They're walking on them rocks. It, 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 He's got it yeah. all in that, Mitchell. Yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it, it happens, you know, and you're going to hit some tough spots, but it just takes time, you know, to work those things out. And, I mean, we've seen some Hall of Famers hit some rough patches, you know, some older – and you just got to work through it. But there are those people that come along in the sport and they are just looking for the next hobby. And that's great. We need those people too. But I yep. love to see the people that get started and they hang around. And they realize, too, some people, it's a year-round sport for them because they yeah. live in the right climate or whatever. But I think I think it's important, especially for younger shooters, to realize, hey, it's okay to do it seasonally and put it down and yep. go do other things and then pick it back Enjoy up. life. So you're not burnt out. That's you right. Know? And I think that's one of the biggest mistakes is people get so excited about it. They they start doing it year round and they realize, hey, I'm not a pro. I'm not, you know, I really need to do other things. And that way, if you put it down in the winter and you come back in the spring, you're excited Fresh. about it again. You're not right. burned you're, out. You're, you're, yeah, you get them butterflies and you're like, right. you know. But it's like you said earlier, starting off about enjoying it on the way up. Right. Enjoy it. Yeah, That's, enjoy yeah. winning D class. Enjoy enjoy beating your bu- buddy in A class. You know, and, yep. and all that stuff. It's it's part of it, and I'm glad that I can still remember those days. You know, because it is tough on days when you're out there now and you're having the less than stellar day, and you know you're just working on your game and and shooting expensive practice. You know, when <laughs> when the, when you're not having a good. Time. <laughs> yeah, it's like at one point in your life you're winning all around rings, and then you're sitting there and you're wondering, well, what the yeah. heck is going on? Is you're thinking of, you're thinking about running cranes instead of shooting trap right. targets. You have a 24, and 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 Zach comes up to you and says, "That's a working man's 25. Good job." <laughs> <laughs> I, I have I've done that before. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's true though, you know, and that's part of life too. Um, yep. You got more responsibility and you don't get to go to Iowa and just goof off or Wisconsin, (laughs) but you try to make the most of your, the times you do get to go and you try to do more quality knowing that you're not going to do the quantity. I look back on it though. I wouldn't trade it for anything, but I think how did we shoot almost 20,000 targets a year? How did we shoot 15, 16,000 and and go to all those places and, but I guess no kids, no responsibility. But yeah. different time, different time. Yeah, it really enjoyed it. A lot of fun. Well, Rick, are we missing anything with Mitchell? I mean, I know we're going to have to have him on another time we, because we, we, we could talk about just shooting stories from the old days and stuff. Yeah, yeah. we're I'll not going to get technical next time with Mitchell. We're just going to go stories with Mitchell from Tennessee, and it's going to be freaking. <laughs> he's going to have his corn cob pipe and his little cup, and we're going to get we're going to get wild with it. But uh, <laughs> a, 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 anything, I mean, I know we didn't get really a chance to talk about your your, your crane company. I see your your hoodie, you know, uh, Clark uh, Crane. Um, you we know, it, talk about trap shooting and work, so that's fine. That, that's okay. Well, we'll, but that that helps pay. That gets you to be able to pay to you know to right. afford the, the trap. I'm, so, I'm saving up for trip shooting if he gets into it. That's what I'm doing. Where 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 is your business located anyway? We're right on the Cumberland River here in Nashville. I mean, we're probably we're just a few miles from downtown Nashville. Yeah, uh, and and I, and I hear things are going well. You're staying really busy. Cranes are cranes are moving. Yeah, things are busy. Can't complain. Nashville's booming. Uh, uh, you know, you don't want to wish for it to slow down, but it wouldn't hurt my feelings just a little bit. More shooting time. Shoot a little more. That's right. More shoot- well, Zach, well, hey Zach, you and I have to go down to Nashville. I mean, they they do have some pretty good. Uh, uh, you know, uh, bourbon areas in that area. Oh yeah, they got good food. I tell you what else they got. They got those Nashville chicken sandwiches, the hot ones, the spicy with the honey. Oh, I get down on those. We'll be, <laughs> we'll, we'll be, we'll, I'll be coming down and I'll be stretching those shirts on you, Mitchell. We'll be having a good time. All right. So, 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 is there anyone you'd like to thank, or any you know sponsors, people, anything before we get out of here, Mitchell? Uh 
you know, I don't really have any sponsors to thank other than from years past. You know, Kohler's been good to me. I, I wouldn't say I'm technically a sponsored shooter anymore. I don't do quite enough of it. But the uh, biggest thing for me right now is to meet the minimum requirements so I can keep my state team streak alive at the moment. <laughs> but I I'm love really, that. I'm really hoping that I kind of, you know, in one way I say I'm not going to push trip, but at the same time I would love – to happen for me what's happened to rick that yeah. just the to get to experience that and i think it would uh re-energize me because even in my career of over 30 years that's hard to believe you know you have some ups and downs of man i want to go to every shoot i want to go to the fall I, you know i want to go to the you know and then you lose interest for not i won't say lose interest but you don't have the drive you yeah, change priorities. Yeah, some life years gets, life gets in the way. Yeah, and some years, and I've managed to keep shooting through all of them. But there's some years where you're just fired up, and some years where you're like, nah, I'm just kind of going through the motions. Usually, yeah. the years that I'm most fired up is after you had a bad year and you got kicked in the face, and then you're fired up. And then when you have a good year and you shot really good, that next year I'm like, I don't care. I'm just you know doesn't right. doesn't as much well, matter. And, but. and hopefully, hopefully that'll happen that that trip will enjoy it because trust me. It does. Uh, it does a lot with bad. the heart, yeah. you know. It 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 really, you know, stand there with Tyler and be able to shoot with them. You know, it, when I didn't get to shoot with them at the autumn, he's like, "Dad, I, I'm going to worry about school," which is cool because he's using that like, "Hey, I don't want to, I want to do some other stuff," and I'm like, I'm yeah, "You know, it's so important," and I think more more young people need to be like that where they're focusing on the priority because shooting's forever, but yeah. education and a career and building, you know, a, a plan in life. That's, that's really important. Yeah. And if you can always come back. An example of it. Yeah. You can, well, we can always come back to it, you know, and I love to see guys get their careers going, come back. I mean, you're shooting with a guy right now that did that. He, he shot when he was younger, got his business going and now his son's shooting with him, you know, and that, and it's really cool to see two fathers, two sons. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. With Justin and Wyatt, I mean, that's the that's the cool stuff. It it really is. Yeah. You know. So. Well, you know, we got to thank our show sponsors: um, Remington, Winnick, Shot Tracker, RM Junior Shooting Clinics. You guys are keeping him busy. I gotta say, he was just down in Florida. He he was telling me good oh, stories about all the on the next episode. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. Um, it, you know, we, we have some exciting announcements. We're going to have some new sponsors join the show. We'll wait to announce that here in a minute, but, uh, but good news. Lots of people are jumping on board and loving, loving the show. And, uh, your one and only financial advisor, Zach Danini. If you need a little help, give me a call. Shameless plug. Um, <laughs> but, but, but we're, we're having a good time. So thank you guys for listening. Mitchell, we will definitely have you on again for Absolutely. more story time with Tennessee. And it's going to be great. Sounds good. Thank yep. you guys. Thank you. And the Trap Talk podcast is brought to you in part by RM Shooting Clinics. Have Ricky take your game to the next level. If you want to shoot hundreds of hundreds of hundreds, give Ricky a call today. Zach Nini Financial. We believe in putting people first. 